Today we're looking at projectile motion. First we're going to define it, and then we're going to look at some math questions using it. Essentially what projectile motion is, is the idea that whatever goes up must come down. When we project an object up into the air, it's launched, and after it's launched, only gravity has an influence on it. So it may keep going up for a while, but eventually it will come down, and there are actually equations that we use to detect how long it's going to take to go up and down. For the metric system, we use this equation. The um, function of h at t means the height in meters after any given amount of time in seconds. And it's equal to negative 4.9 t squared, t is equal to time, plus v sub 0, which means um, the initial vertical velocity. And we'll see all of these inside the questions. Um, the velocity times t plus h, which is the initial height. This is the formula for metric. And then the formula for imperial, in other words, when it's in feet per second, is negative 16 t squared plus vt plus h. And I'll show a question with each of these using both the metric and the imperial. Our first question says, Jim hits a badminton birdie straight up at the velocity of 25 meters per second. If he hits the birdie at one meter off the ground, how long will it take to come back down? And so because we're using metric, you see the word meters in there, because we're talking about meters, we're going to use this equation, the equation with negative 4.9 t squared. Let's substitute in the values that we know. First, ht is the height at a given time. All right. So we're looking for when the height is equal to 0. We don't know what time is, but we know we want the height to equal 0. So we're going to put 0 in there for height. We don't know what time is, so that remains a variable of t. 25 is going to be our initial velocity, because it said he hit it at 25 meters per second. And the height that he hit it, he hit the birdie at 1 meter off the ground, so the initial height was 1 meter. Now we have our quadratic equation set up. And we can solve this quadratic equation to find what the time is. We're going to have to solve using the quadratic formula. And this is a formula we should become somewhat familiar with, because you will see over and over. And once you practice with it, it's actually pretty, pretty nice to work with formula. And so let's go ahead and do a little bit of practice. Um, when you have a quadratic set up, whatever number is before t squared, that's a. Whatever number is before t is going to be b, and then the final number all by itself is c. All right, so that's a, b, and c. And so in this case, we will substitute b in everywhere we see b. We'll substitute negative 4.9 everywhere we see a. And we'll substitute the value of 1 everywhere that we see is the letter c. Let's go ahead and do that. So negative 25 plus or minus the square root of 25 squared minus 4 times negative 4.9 times 1, and that's all over 2 times negative 4.9. 25 squared is 625 minus, and then I multiplied these together, 4 times negative 4.9 times 1, and that will give me a negative 19.6. 625 minus negative 19.6 is the same as saying 625 plus 19.6, and that will give us a value of 644.6. When I get to this point in my equation, I usually pull out my calculator and start writing this stuff in. So negative 25, first I'll do negative 25 plus this amount, the square root of 644.6, divided by, we do the whole thing divided by 9.8, and then I'll go back and do negative 25 minus the square root of 644.6. I'll get whatever that value is, and then divide the whole thing by negative 9.8. So the result that I get when I do both of those things is I have the time is equal to either negative 0.04 seconds or 5.14 seconds. In this case, we know that time 
you can't really have a negative time. So our time we're going to say is equal to 5.14 seconds. In other words, if Jim hits this birdie up 25 meters per second, it will take 5.14 seconds for it to come back down again. All right. Let's look at one more question. Jill throws a football with an initial vertical velocity of 10 feet per second. All right, that's how far, how fast it's going up and down. She releases the ball at five feet above the ground. If the receiver misses the ball, okay, how long will it take to hit the ground? So we're looking for, again, the height is going to be equal to zero. We're looking for when it hits the ground. And we are not given the time but we are given the initial velocity of 10, the initial vertical velocity of 10 feet per second, and it starts at 5 feet above the ground. If you notice here, we're using the imperial formula, the negative 16t squared, because we are using feet per second instead of meters per second. So there are some advantages to this, because we're not going to have any decimals in there, so that may, may be nice for some people. All right. Just like we did with the first question, we're going to solve using the quadratic equation, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and that whole thing divided by 2a. Just a quick note, when you're punching this into the calculator, what I do is I solve the top, and then I hit equals, and then I divide by 2 times a. That way I'm finding all of this and dividing it by 2a, and that, that usually helps with the order of operations, just to make sure we're not dividing just part of it by 2a. Just a little note there. I know some calculators, it's all programmed in, so it makes it easier. All right, so I'm substituting in my value, 10 is equal to b, so I have negative 10 plus or minus 10 squared minus 4 times the value for a, which was negative 16, times the value for c, which was 5, and that whole thing is divided by 2 times the value of a, and a is negative 16. The first thing I'm going to do is my exponents, 10 squared, and then I'm going to multiply these together and leave them on the other side of this negative sign. So 10 squared is equal to 100, and 4 times negative 16 times 5 will give me negative 320. 100 minus negative 320 is the same as saying 100 plus 320, and we'll get our value of 420. This is, again, the point where I would take out my calculator, punch in the values, and get the results. The results are that time is either equal to negative 0.3 or positive 0.95 seconds because time can't really be measured in a negative number. We're going to take the positive number of 0.95 seconds, or about one second, and say, if the receiver misses a ball, it will take about 0.95 seconds for it to hit the ground. So next time your mom yells at you for throwing stuff in the house, or your gym teacher tells you to stop taking shots at the net, or your regular teacher tells you to stop throwing paper in class, you can tell them, I'm just studying projectile motions. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time.